Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's change of command ceremony. Today, Major General Thomas S. James Jr. will change command of the 7th Infantry Division with Major General Willard M. Burleson. On the field before you are the units participating in today's ceremony, composed of brigade, battalion, and company commanders, unit colors, and the soldiers assigned to the 7th Infantry Division. The Bayonet Division would like to recognize our distinguished guests for today's ceremony. Please hold your applause until the end. Congressman Denny Heck from the 10th District of Washington. Miss Joan Shalikashvili, wife of the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, retired Major General Jimmy Collins. Lieutenant General Gary Valeski, Commanding General for America's First Corps and Joint Base Lewis McCord. His wife Leanne and his son Alex. Retired Lieutenant General Edward Soriano and his wife Vivian. Retired Lieutenant General Bill Harrison. Command Sergeant Major Walter Tagalakud, Command Sergeant Major for the America's First Corps and his wife, Carolyn. Major General Brett Dougherty, Adjutant General for the State of Washington. Major General Tom James and his wife, Shell. Major General Bill Burleson and his wife, Cindy. Major General Jeff Milhorn, Deputy Commanding General for America's First Corps and his wife, Deb. Retired Major General Ken Farmer and his wife, Pat. Retired Major General J.B. Taylor. Retired Major General Tom Cole and his wife, Dottie. Retired Major General Ed Trobaugh. Retired Major General John Hemphill and his wife, Peggy. Command Sergeant Major Jack Love. Command Sergeant Major for the 7th Infantry Division and his wife, Cindy. Retired Chief Warrant Officer 5, Mike Freed. Joint Base Lewis McCord, Civilian Hall of Fame member. Retired Command Sergeant Major Herb Schmelling, Joint Base Lewis McCord, Civilian Hall of Fame member. Miss Mary Findlay. Brigadier General Wally Turner, Assistant Adjutant General from the State of Washington. Brigadier General Ronald Clark, Chief of Staff, U.S. Army Pacific. Brigadier General Brian Menace, Director, Force Management, Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff, G357, and his wife, Kelly. Brigadier General Michel Henri St. Louis, Deputy Commanding General for Operations for America's First Corps, and his wife, Miss Julie Lowe. Brigadier General William Edwards, Commander, Land Component Command, Oregon Joint Force Headquarters. Retired Brigadier General Oscar Hillman and his wife, Patty. Colonel James Moore, Commander, 593rd Expeditionary Sustainment Command. Command Sergeant Major Pamela Williams, Command Sergeant Major for the 593rd Expeditionary Sustainment Command. Colonel Nicole Lucas, Garrison Commander for Joint Base Lewis McCord and her husband wife, Lang. Command Sergeant Major Rich Mulryan, Garrison Command Sergeant Major for Joint Base Lewis McCord. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a round of applause for all of our distinguished guests. Music today is provided by America's First Corps Band, the heartbeat of America's Corps. America's First Corps Band is commanded by Sergeant First Class Shelby Barber, and the drum major is Sergeant First Class Philip Andrew. The salute battery is from Alpha Battery, 1st Battalion, 37th Field Artillery Regiment. The salute battery is under the direction of First Lieutenant Matthew C. Higgins and Staff Sergeant Andrew C. Sherwood. The reviewing officer for today's ceremony is Lieutenant General Gary J. Valeski, Commander of America's First Corps and Joint Base Lewis McCord. The host commander is Major General Thomas S. James Jr., Commander of the 7th Infantry Division. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Colonel Kyle J. Marsh, Chief of Staff for the 7th Infantry Division. The 7th Infantry Division Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Jack H. Love. Please direct your attention to the VIP seating section, where at this time, Sergeant Jordan Lambert from the 7th ID Headquarters is presenting Mrs. James a bouquet of red roses as a token of appreciation from the soldiers of the division and for her support of Task Force Bayonet over the past two years. In addition, Major General James's daughter, Maddie, is being presented a bouquet of flowers for her loving support of her father as Bayonet 6.
At this time, Staff Sergeant Mark McIntosh from the 7th ID Headquarters is presenting Mrs. Burleson a bouquet of yellow roses. The color of yellow is symbolic of welcome, and the budding flowers are in anticipation of the things to come. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation provided by the Division Chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel Khalid Shabazz. Please bow your heads. God, we come before you this morning with mixed emotions. Our first emotion is that of sadness because we are losing a leader who we affectionately call our commander. General James challenged us, he mentored us, he loved us, but most importantly, he trained us to fight and win our nation's wars. God, our second emotion is that of gratefulness because we knew you wouldn't leave us without leadership. God bless General Burleson to lead us with cur courage, character, and commitment for the embitterment of our soldiers and our nation. And God, as always, we pray for our brothers and sisters on the front lines of democracy who are in the foxholes of freedom. Keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Let the Bayonet Division say, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. In just a moment, you will hear the adjutant direct the bugler to sound attention as the ceremony begins. Sound! Parade rest! Sound off! Throughout history, commanders have used music to raise morale and esprit de corps of their soldiers before battle with patriotic songs and stirring marches. Today, that is still symbolized here in ceremonies such as this. The playing of sound off originated during the Crusades. Troops offering themselves for battle were drawn up in a long formation while the band countermarched before them to honor those soldiers chosen to serve. The baldric, the large ceremonial belt worn over the shoulder of the drum major, is the band's set of colors on the parade field and displays the core campaign credits. In the days before radio communication, the band played a major role on the field of combat. In the heat of battle, when voice commands were difficult to hear, the mace, carried by the drum major, was used to relay commands to the band, who in turn relayed the commands musically to the soldiers.
Sound, attention. Sound, present arms. There's a commander's horn. Sound, order arms. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and direct your attention to the reviewing stand for the arrival of the official party and the presentation of honors. Today, Lieutenant General Valeski has deferred honors to Major General James and the soldiers of the 7th Infantry Division for the ceremony. Sound, present, parks! Staff, present, parks! Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. And parade, rest. At this time, the reviewing party will join the commander of troops as the commander of troops will escort them to begin the final inspection of the soldiers. The 7th Infantry Division is a unique 305 soldier headquarters located at Joint Base Lewis McCord. It's charged with overseeing one of the largest divisions in the United States Army. The Bayonet Division maintains a high level of personnel, medical, materiel, and training readiness for eight brigades, totaling more than 14,000 soldiers, while also maintaining a fully mission-capable mission command headquarters node that is capable of worldwide deployment. The 7th Infantry Division is comprised of the Headquarters Support Company, the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, the 2nd Striker Brigade Combat Team, the 2nd Infantry Division Artillery, the 81st Striker Brigade Combat Team, the 17th Field Artillery Brigade, the 555th Engineer Brigade, 
the 201st Military Intelligence Brigade, and the 16th Combat Aviation Brigade. The division was first activated in December 1917 during World War I as part of the American Expeditionary Force. Now, although elements of the division saw brief active service in World War I, it is best known for its participation in the Pacific Ocean Theater of World War II. The seventh reclaimed American soil on the Atu Atoll from the Imperial Japanese Army and then pressed west to Kwajalein, Lete, and Okinawa. Following the Japanese surrender in 1945, the division was stationed at Japan and Korea. This was the ideal staging ground for the impending Korean War. In 1950, the 7th Infantry Division was one of the first units in action. It took part in the Incheon landings where Douglas MacArthur coined the 7th Infantry Division as his bayonet division, since they would stab into the heart of Korea. The bayonet division fought through and transitioned to occupation operations along the newly established demilitarized zone. Following the cessation of active hostilities in the Korean War, the division remained at Camp Kitty Hawk, Korea, until 1971, when it returned to the United States and inactivated. The Bayonet Division reactivated on 21 October 1974 at Fort Ord, California, as a part of a programmed 16 division force. And on 1 October 1985, the division was redesignated as a Light Infantry Division, named the 7th Infantry Division Light and it was the first U.S. division specifically designed as such. In 1988, President Ronald Reagan deployed the 7th to Honduras. This was to reinforce the Democratic government in Operation Golden Pheasant. In 1989, President George H.W. Bush trusted the 7th Infantry Division with Operation Just Cause to secure U.S. vital assets and oust the dictator Manuel Noriega from power in Panama. In the early 1990s, the Bayonet Division provided domestic support to civil authorities in Operation Green Sweep in Humboldt County, California, and during the 1992 Los Angeles riots. Multiple brigades of the Bayonet Division were deactivated in 1993 at Fort Ord, and then the division headquarters formally deactivated at Fort Lewis, Washington in 1994. The division later reactivated at Fort Carson, Colorado in 1999 and was a training and evaluation unit for Army National Guard brigades, which it undertook until its inactivation in 2006. On April 26, 2012, the Department of Defense formally announced that the 7th Infantry Division headquarters would be reactivated on 1 October 2012, and that upon reactivation, the division has assumed uh, training readiness authority over the seven Joint Base Lewis McCord Brigades. Since 1 October 2012, the division inactivated the 4th Striker Brigade Combat Team, they activated the 2nd Division Artillery, and has grown to be one of the largest divisions with over 14,000 soldiers in the United States Army. The 7th Infantry Division has also forged relationships with America's Pacific partners to include Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Japan, Korea, and Australia. The success of the 7th Infantry Division was most recently acknowledged with its authorized expansion and the formation of a deployable mission command node. In the summer of 2015, the 7th Infantry Division Mission Command Node partnered with the 2nd Brigade of the 10th Mountain Division deployed to Kandahar, Afghanistan to assume responsibility for the Train, Advise, Assist Command South Mission from the 1st Cavalry Division. They redeployed in the summer of 2016 after their successful completion of the division's first combat deployment since 1989 in support of Operation Just Cause. Today, the members of the 7th Infantry Division continue to build the nation's trust in the bayonet soldiers while answering the nation's call, living up to our motto, trust in me.
Sound attention. Sound officers and colors, center, march. Detachment! Forward! Sound present. Detachment present. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Detachment! Order! Huh. Sound, order arms, and parade! 
rush. The change of command ceremony is a simple traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. The key to the change of command is the passing of the unit colors. These colors represent not only the heritage and the history of the unit, but also the unity and the loyalty of its soldiers. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there also are the colors. The custodian of the colors is the command sergeant major. As the senior enlisted soldier in the 7th Infantry Division, Command Sergeant Major Love is both the spokesperson for the loyalty and concerns of the soldiers, and he is a principal advisor to the commander. By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5, the undersigned assumes command of the 7th Infantry Division, effective 11 August 2017, signed Willard M. Burleson, Major General, United States Army, commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, First Lieutenant Kai Alentonado from the Salute Battery will now present a shell casing to Major General James commemorating the last round fired during today's presentation of honors. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of America's First Corps, Lieutenant General Gary J. Valeski. Well, good morning. Good morning. Hey, we've almost got it. Just a little bit better. Good morning. How are you? There we go. Hey, before I start, I want to highlight two things. First, I think we should give the, uh, the adjutant a round of applause for the ability to run all the way from there to here in record time. Well done, Ed. And, and I would be remiss to say, even though this is a change of command for uh, General James, Command Sergeant Major Love is also changing, and I want to make sure that we don't uh, forget the great contribution he, he and his family have made to JBLM. So I'd like us to give Sergeant Major Love and his family a round of applause as well. Thank you, Sergeant Major. And while we have already observed protocol, I do want to thank uh, Congressman Heck, Ms. Shally Kashvili, and and highlight uh, General Harrison and General Soriano and, and thank uh, all of them for coming to our ceremony today. Distinguished guests, friends, and most importantly, our Gold Star family members and soldiers of the 7th Infantry Division, welcome to today's change of command ceremony between Major General Tom James and Major General Bill Burleson. I want to extend a special welcome to all of our veteran bayonet soldiers that have uh, joined us today. You are the ones that keep the history and traditions of this great division alive and close to our hearts. We can't do it without you. We build upon the foundation you've laid. Because for nearly 100 years, bayonet soldiers have kept our nation free, fighting from the islands of the Pacific to the hills of Korea, from the jungles of Panama to Iraq and Afghanistan. And today, the 7th Infantry Division continues to prepare units to deploy, fight, and win decisively in any environment. On the field today, are the soldiers of the 7th who exemplify the spirit of the bayonet. The soldiers of Task Force Bayonet build upon their reputation as relentless warriors that are masters of war fighting and demonstrate extraordinary courage. And just as Camp Wheeler served as their staging ground to train for war, the soldiers in front of us here at JBLM are ready today to answer our nation's call. 
I'm lucky to say I get to serve with them. Please join me in a round of applause for our bayonet soldiers. <laughs> Commanding the most diverse division in our, in our Army is a challenge. It has a complex mission, and to be successful, it requires leaders with passion, clarity of vision, and above all, steely determination to, uh, and drive to inspire those to accomplish what they themselves did not think was possible. General Don Starry once said, wars are won by the courage of our soldiers, the quality of our leaders, and the excellence of our training. And no one has done that better than General James. He has set conditions of trust up front by readily, readily displaying the attributes of be, know, and do. He taught leaders how to effectively empower subordinates and exercise mission command, manage and underwrite risk, innovate, and most importantly, effectively build high-functioning teams. And when it came to overcoming challenging circumstances, difficulties, or frustrations, he demonstrated how important inspirational leadership is and making subordinates believe there is no obstacle they can't overcome. Furthermore, he's been the touchstone for instilling a culture of readiness within this division by investing in programs such as the Bayonet, uh, the Bayonet Warrior Athlete Program and developing demanding exavals such as Bayonet Focus to create conditions to certify leaders and units who demonstrate competence in their warfighting skills. He brought the entire division together as one team during these exercises. The same team building, trust, and innovation he instilled in his soldiers resonated and has transcended beyond 7th ID to our partners across JBLM. And when the nation called, 7th Infantry Division is answered. From the headquarters deploying in 2015 in support of Operation Freedom Sentinel and Resolute Support, to today where 16th Cab, 502nd MI, and 5-3 FA Battalion have answered that same call supporting CENTCOM. Tom, you prepared them well, and you have always done so. But his legacy will be defined by his character. Tom's generally passionate about his soldiers and their families. Subordinates want to follow him because he's an authentic leader. He makes people feel like they matter and that they are critical team members of Team Bayonet. Unfortunately, today we also have to say goodbye to Tom's soulmate, Shelley. She's been an incredible teammate, not only to Tom, but to the entire JBLM family. Always the first to lend a hand, she sacrificed her time to invest in the success of seven family readiness programs and ensured the families of deployed soldiers and Gold Star family members were always taken care of. Trey, Zach, and Maddie, I want to thank you as well. It was through your pivotal support to your father that he was able to co cope with Clemson's loss in 2015. Good thing they won it all last year, Tom. Tom and Shelley, never forget that your roots have been planted here. You'll always have a home here at JBLM. Please join me in a round of applause for Team James. As we bid farewell to General James and his family, we open another chapter in the illustrious history of the 7th Infantry Division. We welcome back General Bill Burleson, his wife Cindy, their son Matt Burleson, who's a lieutenant in our Army, and daughter Beth. General Burleson is no stranger to the division. He served as a platoon leader, as a bayonet soldier in combat during Operation Just Cause, and was later assigned as the Deputy Commanding General for Operations shortly after the division was reactivated here at JBLM. To Team Burleson, welcome home. We look forward to serving with you and seeing you continue to build upon the outstanding reputation of this command. Congratulations again. Again, thank you for attending our ceremony today. Please keep our deployed soldiers and their families in your thoughts and prayers. It's because of them that we remain free and stand as the greatest nation on this earth. God bless you. God bless America. God bless America's First Corps and Task Force Bayonet. Courage, Army Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander of the 7th Infantry Division, Major General Thomas S. James, Jr. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Congressman Heck, Ms. Shali, General Harrison, distinguished guests, family, and friends of Task Force Bayonet. Warriors on the field, God bless you. 
General Valesky, thank you for those kind remarks, and thank you and Leanne for your service and your leadership for America's First Corps. Lieutenant General Harrison, it has been an absolute honor to command the same division as you and to execute mission command in the headquarters that bears your name, Harrison Hall. I hope I was able to meet your expectations. Lisa Hallett, thank you for all you do for our Gold Star community. Your continued service after sacrificing so much is truly remarkable. Thanks for all you have done for Maddie and for keeping her employed. Our civic leaders and retirees, thank you for wrapping your arms around our soldiers and families and making JBLM feel like home. There is a reason why JBLM is the number one requested post in our Army. Serving in Task Force Bayonet with these incredible soldiers has been the ultimate highlight of my career. I am humbled that the Army gave me the opportunity. Not only did I have the chance to command the finest organization around, but also invested seven of the best ECGs imaginable, three incredible chiefs of staff, 14 superb brigade commanders, and the best Command Star Major that ever wore the uniform. Command Star Major Jack Love, thank you for your passion for our soldiers, your loyalty to the unit, and humble confidence that inspired every soldier in this great formation, especially the commanding general. Cindy, thank you for your hard work and commitment to our soldiers and families. You have done so much for our division headquarters and subordinate commands, and you have provided an invaluable support to Shelley, and in the process formed a lifelong friendship. Best of luck, Jack, as you head off to Afghanistan and Cindy, the community will continue to embrace you and your family back here at JBLM. Two years ago, we started this journey with an idea that we would take a small TRA-focused division headquarters with six left shoulder patches and form a task force focused on building a team of Army professionals that are combat ready to fight and win in a complex world. We created the spirit of the bayonet a spirit that was humbled and, motivi correction, humbled and motivated by those that came before us, defined by a culture of connected leaders that inspire our subordinates, and driven by a warrior spirit with a reflexive desire to fight and win, and fight and win for each other. The soldiers on the field are the spirit of the bayonet. You are the sharp edge of the blade that cuts through adversity and challenge and accomplishes the mission in any operational environment. Your accomplishments are amazing. During our journey, we saw a small extension of the division headquarters deploy to Kandahar, Afghanistan, and exercise mission command as TAC South. As we speak, Task Force Raptor 16th Cab conducts combat operations in Afghanistan and Iraq helping our Afghan and Iraqi partners secure their country, to include taking back Mosul from ISIS. 17th Field Artillery, Thunderbolt, executed numerous mission command exercises and deployed high Mars combat power to Southwest Asia, firing over 2,000 precision munitions in support of combat operations. 201st EMIB Griffin, executed numerous core level mission command exercises while supporting operations in the Pacific and Southwest Asia, also deploying the 502nd MI to Afghanistan. 1-2 Striker, Ghost, successfully built and sustained combat power in two NTC rotations and two Pacific pathways, often overlapped in supporting numerous other exercises. 2-2 Striker, Task Force Lancer, successfully built and sustained combat power with an NTC rotation, a pathways rotation, while fielding double V strikers. They're now deploying to NTC by sea and will execute in September after uh, completing bayonet focus. 81st Striker Task Force Raven joined our task force under the Associated Unit Pilot Program, codifying an already solid relationship. Devardi Warrior Strike, as the Force Field Artillery Headquarters for 2nd Infantry Division in Korea, conducted numerous mission command exercises as they prepare for potential combat operations on the pen. And triple nickel 555 engineers able 
currently serves as Task Force Ops for the NORTHCOM Defense Suburban Response Force and supports numerous core-level mission command exercises. These great units are truly a team of Army professionals that are combat ready to fight and win in a complex world. Thank you for your service and your leadership. Now, I've been blessed with an incredible family. Shelley, I do not deserve you. You truly are the heart and soul of our family. Your heart pumps love at JBLM, at Austin, Texas, and at Clemson, South Carolina. You make home a feeling, not a physical location. I love you, sweetheart. Maddie, words cannot describe what you mean to me. I could not be more proud of you as you head off to Clemson to fill your lifelong dream. I love you. Go Tigers. Our sons, Trey and Zach, could not be here today, but they're heavy in our thoughts, given their sacrifices along our Army journey. Bill and Cindy Burleson, congratulations and welcome back to Task Force Bayonet. The Army could not have picked a better command team for this great division. Bill is an amazing leader and expert trainer and warfighter. He knows JBLM, and he knows how to build a team and sustain combat readiness. They are the perfect fit for this great organization to carry the spirit forward. In closing, it has been the highlight of our career to serve in the magnificent seventh. And I had the Don Starry quote in here as well, sir. As we talk about wars are won by the courage of our soldiers, the quality of our leaders, and the excellence of our training, this formation is ready to deploy, fight, and win decisively anywhere because of the incredible soldiers, the inspiring leaders that lead them, and our first-class training. To all here today, thank you for your support and friendship. It has been a remarkable experience. To the band, Salute Battery, and Protocol, and all that were involved in this ceremony, thank you for making this ceremony extra special, and continue to keep our deployed soldiers forward in your thoughts and prayers. Have a great day. Trust in me. Courage and Army Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 7th Infantry Division, Major General Willard M. Burleson. Congressman Heck, uh, Ms. Ms. Shally, uh, General and Mrs. Valesky, uh, General, General Harrison, General and Mrs. Soriano, fellow general officers, members of the Joint Base Lewis McCord and First Corps team, soldiers and families on the field today, all members of Task Force Bayonet. Thank you all for your attendance today. Most importantly, um, your presence here today does not honor me, but it honors these soldiers on the field today. They sacrifice, their soldiers, their families sacrifice every day, doing things for our nation that only a very few could do. So thank you all for your attendance. I'm, I'm tremendously humbled and honored to be here today, uh, but most importantly, you honor those on the field. And just as the Corps Commander and Tom James mentioned, I would ask you to remember those that are in harm's way. Uh, from somebody who's just spent a good portion of the last 14 months overseas and spent time with Task Force Raptor flying in the mountains of Afghanistan and knowing what members of our Fires Brigade are doing and the Intel Brigade, they're making a difference for our country. And they're making a difference right now in harm's way. So please remember them as they continue to do what they must for our nation's security. And just as those are protecting our way of life against the enemies of our country in this time of global volatility and uncertainty, I promise to remain committed to our readiness. We've got to be ready now. Ready now, just look across the world, look at the morning news, look at the evening news. It's tremendously uncertain right now and we must fight to prepare ourselves for the next fight so that we are prepared in peace so that we can be invincible in war. I would like to extend a special thanks to uh, Tom and Shelley James in helping with the transition. This is the second time we've done this now over the last couple years and, and you know Tom is, is just such a gentleman um, and a professional. He always does the right things for the unit and for me. So thank you very much Tom. Certainly appreciate that as well as you Shelley. 
And, and lastly, I, I would like to acknowledge Sergeant Major Love. You know, he, he leaves literally in 30 minutes to begin his journey uh, to Afghanistan. But you talk about a guy that's running through the tape. I mean, he's not only here, he was contributing yesterday. Uh, he'll certainly be missed. So thanks to you, Sergeant Major, as well as the other non-commissioned officers and leaders for making this a great event today. You highlight the professionalism of our non-commissioned officer corps. And lastly, as we wrap up, a uh, special group, two groups here on my behalf. Um, there's a group of my classmates from the class of 88 who I've known for over 33 years, uh, and in one case, 43 years, uh, who truly demonstrate what it means to be friends. Uh, and I certainly appreciate that. Also, probably in the back couple rows of these stands are a handful of non-commissioned officers, some of whom have known me since I was a second lieutenant in this division, others who I've served with at much higher level. Although I'm sure they're here out of amazement uh, and wonderment, I do appreciate uh, everything that they've done for me to show what right is like, as well as my very first company commander who's here today. Uh, he's truly here for amazement, and anything he says about me is probably only 50% true. Again, thank you all very much. Uh, thank you, General Valesky, for the great welcome here to the team. Uh, it's great to be back in this wonderful community, Joint Base Lewis McCord, the First Corps team, and Task Force Bayonet. Trust in me, Bayonet. Attention! Sound detachment post march!
Ladies and gentlemen, during pass and review, please be sure to render the appropriate honors as the national colors pass. Passing the reviewing stand is the Chief of Staff of the 7th Infantry Division, Colonel Kyle J. Marsh. The Division G-1 is Lieutenant Colonel Tony Braxton. The Division G-2 is Lieutenant Colonel Sam Smith. The Division G-3 is Lieutenant Colonel Jared Bordwell. And the Division G-4 is Lieutenant Colonel Sid Hills. Shelby Barber, and the drum major is Sergeant First Class Philip Andrew. Headquarters Support Company, 7th Infantry Division, is commanded by Captain Ryan Yamauchi and the First Sergeant Herbert Keeley. The First Striker Brigade Combat Team is commanded by Colonel Jasper Jeffers. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Christopher Grant. The Headquarters and Headquarters Company, 1st Striker Brigade, is commanded by Captain Corbin Duke. The 1st Sergeant is 1st Sergeant David George. The 1st Battalion, 23rd Infantry Regiment, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Stedman. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Michael Luther. The 2nd Battalion, 3rd Infantry Regiment is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Nunn. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Mark Ekstrom. The 5th Battalion, 20th Infantry Regiment, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Scott Siegfried. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Aaron Spall.
the 1st Squadron, 14th Cavalry Regiment, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Dixon. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Tony Towns. The 23rd Brigade Engineering Battalion is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas Maline. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Cornell Ellis. The 296th Brigade Support Battalion is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Crow. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Kevin Moreland. The 2nd Striker Brigade Combat Team is commanded by Colonel Jason Maselli. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Ronald Graves. <laughs> Headquarters and Headquarters Company 2nd Striker Brigade is commanded by Captain David Brink. The 1st Sergeant is 1st Sergeant Melkor Labrador. The 2nd Battalion, 1st Infantry Regiment is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Charles Ford. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Robert Ward. The 1st Battalion, 17th Infantry Regiment is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Rasmussen. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Eric Chastain. Battalion 23rd Infantry Regiment is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Albertus. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Calvin Overway. The 8th Squadron, 1st Cavalry Regiment, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Michael Berry. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Howard Johnson. The 14th Brigade Engineering Battalion is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Sean Patrick. Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Warner Irvin.
The 2nd Brigade Support Battalion is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Agnes. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Christopher Cook. National Colors and the 7th Infantry Division Color Guard are under the direction of Command Sergeant Major Jack H. Love, the 7th Infantry Division Command Sergeant Major. Division Artillery is commanded by Colonel David Pierce. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Donald Ferguson. Headquarters and Headquarters Battery Duvardi is commanded by Captain Matthew Wagner. The first sergeant is First Sergeant Benny Campbell. The second battalion, 17th Field Artillery Regiment, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Kaplatinsky, and the Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Robert Flynn. The 1st Battalion, 37th Field Artillery Regiment, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel John Williams. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Jacoby Gadsden. The 17th Field Artillery Brigade is commanded by Colonel Christopher Winley. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Joe Winstead. Headquarters and Headquarters Battery Field Artillery Brigade is commanded by Captain Brennan Devereaux. And the First Sergeant is First Sergeant Thomas Caracillo. The 1st Battalion, 94th Field Artillery Regiment, is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Jody Hansen. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Sean Connell. The 308th Brigade Support Battalion is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Taylor Basie. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Felicia Red. The 555th Engineer Brigade is commanded by Colonel John Beckett. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Tetrio. The Headquarters and Headquarters Company for the 555th Engineer Brigade is commanded by Captain Colin A. Sexton. The Company First Sergeant is First Sergeant David Wilcox. The 864th Engineer Battalion is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Christian Thompson. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Jeffrey Tolliver. The 
201st Expeditionary Military Intelligence Brigade is commanded by Colonel Todd Berry. The Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Jose Melendez Torres. The headquarters and headquarters company for the 201st Expeditionary Military Intelligence Brigade is commanded by Captain Austin Roberts. The company first sergeant is First Sergeant Roger Dover. The 109th Military Intelligence Battalion is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Carol Hickey. Command Sergeant Major is Command Sergeant Major Kenneth Greedy. The 16th Combat Aviation Brigade is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Buck Surrett. Their Command Sergeant Major is Master Sergeant Jose Lopez Oliveira. The Headquarters and Headquarters Company for the 16th Combat Aviation Brigade is commanded by Captain Stanton Warner. Their Company First Sergeant is First Sergeant William Bennett. The 46th Aviation Support Battalion is commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Shoshana Lane. The Command Sergeant Major is First Sergeant Dionisio Suazo. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for your attendance. Trust in me.